sad little waltz to introduce a sad little story. This is about children with cancer. Children with cancer is actually a charity. It's the largest charity in the United Kingdom and it collects money, huge amounts of money from members of the public and from all sorts of sources including the government to give this money out to researchers to investigate the cause of childhood cancer which has been on the increase for a very long time and apparently, apparently nobody knows why but of course cancer is an environmental disease it's caused by environmental exposures so we kind of know why the question is which environmental exposures so this children with cancer uh, charity that I have been connected with at the time know, know, they know that I'm well a researcher in this area some sort of expert I've published in this area and so they contacted me, Katie Martin contacted me last year about, uh, a, a, uh, first of all, to ask if I, 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 could, I wanted to apply for any funding for research, and secondly, to ask if I wanted to put, any, uh, to put a, any papers in to their international conference on childhood cancer, which is happening this year. So I said, uh, yeah, okay. So I applied with Oli Johansson at the University of, um, uh, of the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, to, to investigate the connection between mobile phone radiation and childhood cancer and we kind of think we know what's happening there but of course you know Sweden has uh, most of its national income from mobile phone sales, Sony Ericsson so it's not surprising that what immediately happened after that was that Oli lost his, all his funding and his laboratory was shut down and of course we didn't get any money from children with cancer or from anybody else um, but that's not the point. The point is I put in three papers as a sort of litmus test to see what was going to happen with, these, uh, with this conference. The papers were first of all a paper about the mobile phone radiation which I won't go into but the second two were more interesting because they were about Fallujah. Now I've done three studies in Fallujah with my colleagues in Iraq uh, and what we've been able to show is that there's an increase, increase in childhood cancer in Fallujah of enormous proportions and also an increase in congenital disease. Now we know that, ca that cancer is, is essentially genetic, so if there's an increase in, con in congenital disease, uh, it's not surprising that there's also an increase in cancer, in childhood cancer. There's a 14-fold excess in childhood cancer in, in Fallujah, Iraq. And because we measured the concentration of elements in the hair of the parents, we kind of know what the cause is. The cause is uranium exposure from particles of uranium that are produced from the modern weapons that the United States and other, and other people use in modern wars. Huge amounts of these uranium particles are floating around. So we have this connection, uranium particles connected to childhood cancer. In, in the biggest study that's ever, ever, ever produced, um, the, you know, the highest rates that have ever been produced in any epidemiological study, higher incidentally than Hiroshima. So these particles, which are aerosols, float around in the air, get inhaled by the parents, are certainly a, a major cause of childhood cancer, and we put it in the peer review literature. So I wanted to take this to the, the children with cancer and present it on the stage and say, look, isn't it, wouldn't it be a good idea to look and see if uh, these, these uranium particles might be the cause of childhood cancer because we have other evidence that they are. For instance, we know that there are high levels of childhood leukemia around nuclear sites. Now, what do they have in nuclear sites? Nuclear sites, they have uranium. Nuclear power stations run on uranium and they produce particles all the time. And these particles float downwind and, of course, what we find from this huge German study but also from all of the other studies where anybody's really looked at the issue, increases in childhood leukemia near where this stuff comes out. So it seems like pretty, pretty, you know, uh, a pretty good hypothesis to investigate. And so you would think that people who had all of the money in the world to disperse in order to investigate this hypothesis might at least be interested in the idea that it might be worth looking at. But no, they threw it out. There was the, the conference committee, and I have a mole on the conference committee, so I know what happened. There was an enormous row on the conference committee, and, and there were two people there who basically bullied everybody else into preventing me from giving this paper at the conference. And they were Patricia Buffler, who's an American uh, from um, San Francisco, from Berkeley, I think. And they were Gillian uh, uh, Birch, who is, who is a professor, uh, an epidemiologist professor in the United Kingdom, two epidemiologists. Now, these two epidemiologists uh, are associated 
with the hypothesis that childhood leukemia in your nucleosites is not caused by the radiation, but is caused by an unknown virus and population mixing. This is an idea that was put forward in the 80s by a guy called Leo Kindlin, who became quite famous as a result of this. Unfortunately, nobody has ever found a leukemia virus uh, that causes leukemia in people. And so it doesn't seem as if it's a runner. And, and, and other aspects of it are rather uh, uh, pro problematical too, which is that the increased childhood leukemia at Sellafield could not be caused by population mixing because there, hadn't, there wasn't any population mixing. <laughs> The levels of childhood leukemia around the Sellafield plant were high long after the Sellafield plant had been built and there was any population mixing at all. And also at Aldermaston too. There, um, the, other, the other place where they found high levels of childhood leukemia was at the Atomic Weapons Research Plant at Aldermaston in Berkshire. Another source of um, uranium particles, incidentally, and plutonium particles, which are measured regularly in the filters, you can find them. They, they, they've known for a long time that these uranium particles are released by Aldermaston. So we have all of these sites where you have high levels of radioactivity from these particles that can be inhaled and get into the system, and we have high levels of leukemia in those places. But we're not allowed to um, to actually investigate this relationship between these radioactive materials and childhood cancer. So I, I phoned them up and I asked them, well, who actually is going to look at, them, uh, at the relationship between ionizing radiation and leukemia? I mean, you must have somebody looking at it, for goodness sake. Childhood cancer we know is caused by radiation. There are lots and lots of studies that show that radiation causes cancer in children. I mean, not the least the Hiroshima study. So somebody must be going to talk about this. If you're not going to let me talk about it, who are you going to let talk about it? Right, well, I found out who they're going to let talk about it. It's Richard Wakeford. Richard Wakeford, well, you won't know this, but let me tell you that Richard Wakeford is the ex-head of research of British nuclear fuel Sellafield. Oh, really? And he's the expert on, on, on the effects of radiation and childhood cancer? Yes, yes, he's the person who's going to be giving this report on radiation and childhood cancer, the head of British nuclear fuel cell field. Of course, he isn't now, because he retired a, couple of, uh, retired a couple of years ago, and he's now a professor at the University of Manchester um, Nuclear University. It's called the Newton Institute or something. Of course, he didn't really retire. You know, because actually now he's an independent expert, independent expert, not connected to the nuclear industry, and he turns up all over the place. He turns up on the Committee on Medical Aspects of Radiation in the Environment, which is the government committee on this. He turns up on the International Committee on Radiological Protection. He turns up advising the Japanese that the, that the results of Fukushima are not going to cause any effects whatever. And he's the man who's going to be talking on the stage at the international conference funded by children with cancer. Okay, so this is what you have to do about it. I told, when they, when they told me that they weren't going to let me talk about Fallujah, or even give a poster about Fallujah, and incidentally there was a huge row about this, it turns out, and it was moved on to another committee to make a decision, but the other committee contained the same people, Patricia Buffler, Julian Birch, okay? So they knocked it on the head. What you've got to do about this is, you, is you've, got to, you've got to stop giving your money to children with cancer. And I told them this. I said, I'll give them one week to change their minds about this. Because I've had enough of these people, haven't you? Haven't you had enough of all of this? There's a complete blockage and, and, and lies upon, piled upon lies, piled upon lies, to tell us that these radiation exposures are, are, are completely harmless and that nobody will die as a result of Fukushima, that nobody will die as a result of, has died as a result of Chernobyl. All of this, all of this mend, mendacious and criminal, yes, and criminal scientific dishonesty, which is, which is taking the place of science and taking the place of truth. So here what you, here's what you must do. You must stop giving any of your money to children with cancer. So if you're giving money to children with cancer, stop. I told them that I would do this, that I would put out a video explaining what had happened and asking people to think about it. The other thing you can do is you can write to them and complain. You can also write to the, the, their trustees, because this, is, this operation is, is a charitable operation, so people who give money to them get, ta get, 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 tax -free, tax, get it tax-free. So write to the trustees and tell them that you don't think that it's right that they, shouldn't, that they, should, have, that they should refuse to have evidence brought in their conference and should refuse to fund research that shows that these uh, exposures to radioactive particles are associated with, um, with childhood leukemia. 
and also you can write to the Charities Commission because they also need to know that charitable money is being given to an organisation that is biased and scientifically dishonest. And so that's why I play this little, little sad tune, um, because someone ought to start looking into the real causes of childhood leukaemia. And it shouldn't be dependent upon people who believe that there's some viral aspect to it, or people who work for the nuclear industry. And that's a situation that you've got at the moment. That is a situation you've got at the moment. So I'll just play you out with the last of this little tune. Otherwise, it's all too sad, isn't it? It's all too sad. Yeah.